Hey there! So, I was teaching statistics, and at the end of the course, a couple of students gave me a Yoda pen. And uh, that, that may have had something to do with one or two things. One is that maybe they looked upon me as some sort of wise mentor, uh, which is the answer that I hope is the case. But I fear it is more likely that I was given this because they knew I like fountain pens. And also, there was a Star Wars reference, I would say, about every second class. So, it may have had something to do with that. In any case, I have reviewed a similar pen. That was the Schaefer Pop R2-D2. This is the Schaefer Pop Yoda. And that was kind of fun because I lent, sorry, I borrowed that, that uh, R2-D2 pen from a friend and now I have one of my own, which is kind of fun. So I will cover the past the pen. I will do a writing sample. I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it. Let's get started. All right, so here we go with the Schaefer Pop Star Wars Yoda. And here you see the pen right next to a Lamy Safari. So uh, you can see it's a, it's a somewhat shorter pen, right? But it's, it's a little stubby. It's a bit, bit stocky, I should say. It's, it's not very thin or skinny. Let's look at the parts of this pen. So the top of the cap, the finial, uh, says uh, Schaefer on one side and Schaefer on the other side. Then we have the cap. The cap is green, obviously, because of the character of Yoda, right? We have the clip with the slit in the middle, the white dot, Schaefer's white dot, right? Uh, we have a little sort of, uh, yeah, black little ring that's part of the section there. And then we have Yoda. Now, every time I look at this, I think, why did they give Yoda a beard? But it's actually not a beard. If you have a close look at this, you see it is Yoda, and below that it says Yoda. It just, I don't know, for, for some reason it looks like hipster Yoda to me. Oh, latte I want, yes, or something. In any case, so we have this, right? Yoda, his face, we have the name. On the other side, there's nothing. I like these bars. They are a bit Star Wars-like uh, for some reason. I, I, they, they did that pretty well. And then here we have two quotes. On the one side we have do or do not, there is no try, and then on the other side, you know, on the other side we have fear is the path to the dark side. Nice. And then here at the bottom we have the copyright, and, oops, sorry, the copyright and Luke's film licensing. The bottom here, simple, uh, same material as the barrel of the pen, looks kind of cute, but it is also meant in particular to post securely, which is rather nice. The pen came with a cartridge. Uh, it's, uh, Schaefer uses proprietary cartridges, right? So that's a nice thing because you may not have these lying around. I refilled this one with uh, uh, my ink, I think. Uh, no, it was not my ink. It's uh, Mont Blanc Toffee Brown. Not everything is my ink. Gosh. Um, so there is that. Section, interesting, rubbery. This rotates a bit, but it's a rubbery material. It, it may actually be rubber. I don't know what it is, but it is. it feels like rubber. Lip there to keep the cap in place, and then we have the simple steel nib. Medium nib, uh, Schaefer, it says Schaefer there, uh, breather hole, uh, etc. And then a nice plastic feed. So, they have it. Let me grab the paper, here we go. And let me zoom out just a little bit. And then let's write. So here we have, now, for the record, I have stubbed this nib a little bit because I thought that might be fun and now there's going to be people who say yeah but then this is not fair because that's not how this normally writes. Indeed, that is why I've also done the review of the Schaefer Pop R2-D2 in completely unaltered state. So if you want to see that, by all means go there. Yoda, the nib is medium and the ink is Mont Blanc. Toffee brown. Okay. These nibs, as I commented on when I reviewed the R2D2, are not the smoothest in the world. That's very simply the case. They're not terrible either. They just are. 
If you want a buttery smooth writing experience, the Schaefer Pop is probably not your pen. If you want a reliable writing experience, the Schaefer Pop really is not that bad. I have found it to be a pretty reliable, simple, cute pen. I'll do some fast writing. Done. Okay. Wetness. Yeah, it's not a gusher. I found this to be a pretty dry writer, so one of my future products, sorry, projects may be to make this never a little wetter. Um, there we go. Then uh, line variation. You can squeeze some out. Always very careful when you do that. Um, but because I try to stub this a little bit, it should have a tiny bit of line variation to begin with. Okay. What about reverse writing? Well, if you want a finer line, it's not really possible. As you can see, this dries out very quickly, so you wouldn't be able to get away with more than a, a word, maybe two. And they have it. Okay. Hashtag BOOM! I probably should not have done that. I apologize to all my headphone wearing viewers. I am so sorry. But you only live once, you see. Okay, let's look at what I like about the pen and what I not like about the pen. All right. Yoda. What do I like about it? What do I not like about it? Well, same thing as with the R2-D2 pen. This is a very specific niche pen. If you don't like Star Wars, this is a pointless thing to have, right? It, it, it's, it, there are references on it that just wouldn't make sense if you don't really like Star Wars. So, I think the pen has quite some things going for it. $22.99 US, uh, that is a medium nib, that includes one cartridge. It's not super expensive. I know there are $2 Chinese pens, but I mean, for what you get, I think it is not terribly expensive. I think the price is right, let's put it that way. What else do I like? Well, it's fun. They really try to make these pens work with the specific characters. The R2-D2 pen has that, that pattern of R2-D2's, I don't know what that is, torso, I don't know what you call that in the droid, but all over it. Here they went a slightly different route, and I like that. The quotes are nice, the little bearded Yoda, it's interesting, it's cute. Uh, even on the cap, right, it has the, the, the symbol of the Rebel Alliance, which is fun, and of course that shows that I'm a nerd, that I know what this is. It even says Star Wars, has a Star Wars logo on there. So, I mean, there is eye for detail, and that's the same thing I found with the, with the R2-D2 pen. Bear in mind, this is not a $500 limited edition, this is a rather simple plastic pen, but they put a lot of effort into it. They put all those little details into it. And that, I think, shows that the pen was put together with care, was designed with care, and, and that, I think, is, is a lot of fun. So, I like that. I also like that they actually put two nice Yoda quotes on there to keep you on the path of the light side, of course, and, which is kind of inspirational, but in a way, that is actually not that terrible when you think about it. Every time you hold this pen, you see do or do not, there is no try, that's actually, philosophically speaking, not that bad to remind yourself of every time you uncap a pen. Just do it. Do it. Don't attempt it. Do it. Go for it all the way. I think that's kind of nice. Things I don't like so much. Well, there's a couple things. The same thing I remarked with the R2-D2 pen. The nib felt a little scratchy. It is not a super smooth writer. Second thing is the whole thing feels plasticky. It feels like this is not an expensive pen. But you know what the fun thing is? It is not an expensive pen. It would be very disturbing if this felt like a super expensive pen, but it was that inexpensive, because then the world would be off. The final thing, and this is something that I actually found the, 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 the biggest issue, because as I said, somewhat scratchy nib, you can probably smooth it out a bit. Um, a slightly cheapish feel, well, it's a cheapish pen, so what do you expect, right? You have to be realistic. The thing that I found a little peculiar um, is that one of the two quotes 
is printed in such a way that it's upside down when you hold the pen. I'll, I'll try to show you what I mean. So I'm, I'm holding this pen, right? I'm right-handed, so I write with it in my right hand. And that quote, can you see that? That looks good, right? But then the other quote, on the inside of my hand, is upside down as I write with it. Can you see that? It's upside down. And unfortunately, that's the quote I look at as I'm writing, because that's the inside of my hand, so that's the one I can see, and I can't read it because it's upside down. Now, if you were... I wonder if they did this so that it becomes a ambidextrous pen, because if I hold this in my left hand, that quote that I stare at is the proper alignment, not flipped, it's not upside down. But now, the other one, is upside down. So maybe they did this in such a way that no matter how you use it, one of the two quotes always faces up. This might be a good one to make a left-handed and a right-handed version for, in my mind. This is nitpicking, but I noticed it. I thought I would just point it out. Having said all of this, it's a fun pen, it's affordable, it's Star Wars. And in this case, it was a gift from students, and that's really, really sweet. So. I think that's exactly how you should approach this pen. It's a fun gift pen. If you know someone who likes Star Wars, who may like fountain pens, this is an easy way to score, right? Because it combines two things. And I think it's great. It serves its purpose. What we really need to see is Boba Fett. Let's be fair. Preferably also Django Fett. And if Cross sees this, we also need one of your nice pens, Django Fett because I'm just a simple man trying to make my way in the universe, right? There we have it. I hope this was useful, and I'm glad to see you later. You will like this video.